fingers, etc., and it'll send you recognized when it sees it. Um, do you do swipe just to recognize those four corners, or no? Or is it only those four directions? Uh, the question is, can you do um, swipe just yes, like you mean, like swiping up into a corner, as yeah, opposed to? Uh, I don't think so. I think it's just left, right, up, and down. Okay. I could be wrong about that. I haven't looked in the documentation for a while, but I think it's only those four. All right, so let's do the demo. Okay, it's just going to be, uh, I'm going to go faster. This is a lot to show you here, okay, but I'm only going to show you all the things we just talked about today, but I'm going to try and show all of it to you in a comprehensive demo. Um, let me talk about what's coming up so that we can just finish the demo and be done. Um, again, we're hoping on Friday to get this university developer program thing going, but it looks like that's still not working. Uh, watch Piazza tomorrow for whether Friday is canceled. At this point, it's not looking good. Um, that would be a Stanford only thing anyway. Uh, the homework, as I said, is due a week from Monday, so more than seven days from now, <laughs> a week from Monday. Um, I really strongly recommend you get started on the part that is a custom view and gesture recognizer immediately. Do not wait until next Tuesday or Wednesday because then you're going to find that this is a lot of work for this assignment to try and jam into one week. That's why I've given you, you know, whatever, however many days it is. Um, do this part. I would try and do this part before next Monday if you can, but certainly do this part um, as soon as possible. Then the rest of the part, which is animation and auto layout, which I'll be talking about on Monday and maybe next Wednesday, uh, you can leave that. You can do that after you do this part. They're not so intertwined as like, oh, uh, you've got to do them all at the same time. It's something you can do after. Okay? Okie dokie. So we are going to create a new project in Xcode here. And I'm going to call it, I'm going fast through a lot of these starting up things because you know how to do this already. So I'm going to call this one Supercard. One thing interesting here, I'm not going to specify a class prefix just so you see what that looks like because we've always specified that like card game or something like that. So I'm just going to not specify that and we'll see. I'm going to create it in my home directory developer as I usually do. Here you can go and see right here where it says viewcontroller.h and viewcontroller.m. That's the name of my view controller classes, which is really, those are bad names. And that's why we usually want to put something in that class prefix, like card game view controller. Okay? Um, I'm going to move these down out of the way. Um, otherwise, here's my view, right? My storyboard view. And um, I could bring up the controller for it right here. You can see I've got a view did load, which I'll go ahead and leave. Uh, memory warning, don't need that. Okay? And all I'm going to do in this view, let's make this a little smaller, is, um, is put a single view, custom view, which is going to be a playing card, but a real playing card, drawn playing card, OK? So let's start by uh, doing what we always love to do, which is setting our background here to uh, moss. I love moss. There it is. OK, there's our moss. We like that. I'm doing that mostly so you can see what's going on better. And then I'm going to grab this custom view out of here. So let's go down here. UI view is pretty far down, past halfway. There it is. See right here, view re represents a rectangular region which draws and receives events. And you just drag it out and put it out here. I don't want it to be this big, so I'm going to make it smaller. Um, it really doesn't matter exactly what size I make this because I'm going to make my class, my drawing class, so that it'll draw properly in pretty much any size. Now, it's going to look pretty bad if it's not you know, mostly tall and wide because playing cards don't look very good if they're wide and short, okay? My view will work. It won't look, people won't recognize it very much as a card, but um, it certainly would be fine. And in your assignment, the custom view you're going to create, you also want to make it that way so that it, it works in any size bound. And in that card, since it's going to be a set card for you, set cards actually could make sense being sideways. You would want the three symbols, you know, going sideways instead of up and down. So a good solution would make really any uh, aspect ratio will look nice for a set card. But playing cards, mostly only going to look good kind of set up. Um, so what we do here then is we go to this identity inspector, and here we want to set our class of this view to be some custom class, right? Right now it's just a generic UI view. And so let's go create that class. So I'm just going to do file, new file, just like we always do to create a class, subject to C. This one's going to be a subclass of UI view, okay, instead of UI view controller or anything else. I'm going to call it playing card view. Okay, this is going to be a generic playing card displaying view. Completely generic, not tied to the machismo model. 
not tied to anything else. It's just like standalone. And remember that when we create views, things that go in the view camp, they want to be as generic as possible and reusable as possible. So that I could use this playing card view in my poker game app and also in Machismo. Okay? That's why we really want to try and enforce that kind of generic, generic nature of it. So here's playing card views implementation. You can see that I've got init with frame right here. That's his designated initializer. And you can see I've got the all important draw rect commented out. Uh, if you don't comment, if you comment this out and you don't put anything in there, that's going to be a performance hit because it's going to think this view needs to be redrawn all the time when in fact it doesn't. So that's why it starts out commented out. But we are going to draw in here, so we will be on com commenting it out. I'm going to move this. We're going to do something in there, but I'm going to move it down out of the way because we're going to do that at the appropriate time. Okay, so anytime we create a new class, really important to think about its public API. So let's do that. Let's look at its public API. It's a view, right? What does it need to do? Well, this playing card needs to display, playing card view needs to display a, a playing card, so we better have some way of specifying which card we want. Now some of you might say, oh great, let's use card star or playing card star it would be great because playing card star has got everything we need. But again, I don't want to tie this generic reusable view to that model. So instead, I'm going to have NSU integer rank and I'm going to have NS string suit and I'm also going to have something that's not even in that other model which is non-atomic bool face up. Okay, so I'm going to have so my card is either face up or face down. This is a playing card view. It's got to be able to display the card in either up or down. So that's my uh, API. That's all I really need. And so we just got to implement that API in our implementation. One thing I'm going to do right off the bat is this. Okay, now I typed this really fast. Whew. That was it. Uh, all I'm doing here is all the setters for all my public API, I am calling set needs display. Okay? Because if someone changes the suit or the rank, and yes, I could say if underbar suit does not equal suit and save myself a set needs display, but okay, demo time here. Uh, so I'm doing set needs display just to make sure if anyone changes the rank or the suit or the face upness of my thing, I tell the system I need to be redrawn. Do you all understand this? Why I do that? Okay, excellent. So let's dive into draw rect here. I'm going to uncomment it out. Okay, and start drawing here. Now, if I, I'm not, I'm going to do all my stuff with UI Bezier path. Um, so, uh, well, actually, no, I'll do a context here just to show you the context. We'll do it a little later. But we're going to start off doing UI Bezier path. And let's start with the outside of my card, which I want to be a rounded rect. Right? I want my cards to be a rounded rect. So I'm just going to create a Bezier path here, UI Bezier path. I'm going to call it, and let me make some more space so we can see lots of code here. Uh, rounded rect, I'll call it. And I do that with UI Bezier. Actually, there's a class method that does that. Rounded uh, Bezier path, Bezier path for rounded rect down here, this one. And uh, I'm going to have that rounded rect be as big as possible. So I specify self.bounds as the rectangle to draw this rounded rect in. Okay, self.bounds is my coordinate system. Its width and height is the amount of space I have on screen to draw in. Okay, corner radius. Um, I'm going to throw in some magic uh, code here for that. This is an important thing. This corner radius is how many points is in the radius as it goes around the corner of the rounded rect. And really that number depends on how big my card is. If I have a big card, I want a big radius. If I have a really small card, I want a really small radius. So I've created this corner scale factor, which I've just standardized to some height, and I can play with these numbers to see what works uh, for all sizes. And then I'm going to pick a radius that at this height is 12, and that works pretty nicely, right? And then I'm going to scale it, okay? So I'm going to call this method right here, corner radius, corner radius. And you'll see I'm going to use that uh, scale factor in other places too to try and scale it up. And this is part of what I'm talking about. You need this thing to draw in any size bounds that makes sense. So you're going to have to have a little bit of stuff that is dependent on you know, the size and height of this thing to pick the right size rounded rects and things like that. So the first thing I'm going to do with this rounded rect actually is I'm going to clip to it. Because I don't, I, sorry, 
add clip. I'm going to, uh, I don't want to ever draw outside that rounded rect. Okay, that's the interior of my card. So I'm just going to clip to that. Uh, it also lets me do something like this, UI color, white color, set my, col set my fill color. And then I can just, ugh, sorry, I do that a lot. Then I'm just going to use this uh, C function, because I just want to show this to you, UI uh, rect fill and you specify a rectangle, self.bounds. Okay, this just fills this rectangle. So it's kind of like shorthand for creating that path, filling it and all that stuff. It just fills it, it's a nice little uh, UI kit thing. And this is gonna make a big rectangle, but this clip is gonna keep the white of this on the inside of that rounded rect. So it's not gonna draw the white in the corners up there. However, I've got a problem here in that my background color for this view is by default white. So it's doing this all on a big white rectangle that includes those corners. So I need to stop my background from being white and I also need to tell the system that my playing card is not opaque. Okay, so I'm going to do that in a knit with frame down here, but I'm going to do it in the right way which is to have a setup method and in setup I'm going to set my background color to nil, which means I don't have, don't draw a background for me. And I'm going to set opaque to no, I'm not opaque. I'm also going to do that content mode equals UI view content mode redraw. Remember I told you that if my bounds ever change, I want to get my draw rect called. Now my bounds is not going to change in this demo, but I know that if it ever does, that's what I want. And then really importantly, I want to make sure I do this in awake from nib. Okay, self set up. Because in fact, in this demo, I am going to be creating this view in a storyboard. I'm not doing alloc init on it. So this is how I'm going to get set up. Okay, question. What's the advantage of setting background color to nil instead of UI color clear color? Yeah, so the question is what's the advantage here of saying nil versus UI color clear color? And the answer is there's no advantage, except for that really what I intend here is. I don't have a background color. So you, you can argue it's just a style thing, but there's no difference in there. Okay? So now we're nice and set up. One thing I'm going to show you real quick here is pound sign pragma. I don't know if you guys know about that. How many people know what pound sign pragma is? Okay, almost nobody. This is awesome then. Okay, so if you do a mark, a pragma mark, uh, you can put a comment, comment like initialization like this. And now up here, see where it says implementation playing card view? If I click on that, you see how it's put a line here? That's this dash, is this line, and then initialization appears here, and it's grouped these for me. So I can put like up here as well, pound sign pragma, mark, drawing, and maybe up here I could put pound sign pragma, mark, properties, and then my stuff really gets nicely grouped. Okay, so something to think about there. Uh, all right, so back to here. So now I've got my background white in a rounded rect, which is great, but I actually also want to draw a little black line around the edge of my card. Okay, so how would I do that? Very, very, very simple. I'm just going to take to set my stroke color, which is UI color, black color, set stroke, and then I'm going to ask this rounded rect thing, this Bezier path, to stroke. Okay, and it's going to have the default line width, which is probably one point, which is what I want, but I can make it thicker or whatever. Um, so let's go ahead and run and see what, how things look so far. Now this is not going to work, and I'm doing this intentionally because you'll probably do the same thing. 